In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a vacancy using our improved vacancy creation steps. To create a new vacancy, from the start page, we'll click New Vacancy. We can do this by either clicking on the content pane or the quick link at the top of the page. We can see our progress bar at the top of the page, which shows our vacancy creation steps in order. And the red asterisks show the steps which are mandatory. We can click the information icon on any page during the vacancy creation steps. An easy group will give us information about the page we're on. We need to decide what the title of our vacancy will be. This will be used to identify the position internally and is not displayed when the vacancy is listed on external websites. The vacancy reference number field is only visible to customers that have this feature switched on and it will add an additional column in the vacancy list to show this. For customers who have the automatic vacancy reference number function enabled, the number is automatically filled in by the system. We need to decide which languages we want our vacancy to be displayed in. The languages we include here will be used for the application form as well as the advert. From the project owner list, we need to decide the user who is responsible for the vacancy. Non-admin users will not see this option. For non-admin users, the project owner will automatically be set to the user account that was used to log into EasyCruit. We'll select the required country from the drop-down menu and then select the region. We'll click the forward arrow button to add it to the selected region list. We can add multiple regions by holding down the control button before clicking the arrow. And we can remove regions by clicking on the region we want to remove and clicking the backwards arrow. If we want to use collaborative rating for this project, we'll enable it by clicking this box. If we tick this box, an additional tab called collaborative rating will appear after the application form section has been completed. Then we'll click Next. On the Departments and Contacts page, we'll select the relevant departments for this vacancy, and we can only see departments that our user account has access to. We can select multiple departments, and when a vacancy with multiple departments selected is posted to a website, the candidate will have to select which department they wish to apply to. Then we'll select a contact person whose details will be displayed within the vacancy listing. This step isn't mandatory, but it will enable applicants to contact us directly. We can add additional contacts by selecting a department and then clicking on Retrieve. Then we'll select the contact we want to add and then click Add. After we tick Next, we're taken to the Project Profile page. This is an additional feature. The information included here will not be visible to candidates, but will help us to classify the vacancy. And the questions included on this page can be configured to meet your organization's specific needs. When we're done, we'll click Next. On the Vacancy Add page, we can create a brand new vacancy by filling in the fields below. The company name will automatically be populated, but this can be changed. Alternatively, we can either select from the vacancy templates created by our administrator or select from previous vacancies to use a previously used vacancy as a template. And only the vacancies that our user account has access to will be displayed as templates. If we select a template or previous vacancy, several fields will automatically be populated and the red asterisks show which fields are compulsory. The information we include here will affect how our advert appears to candidates. And we can see a preview of our vacancy by clicking on the preview button. The one liner is the tagline which is displayed above the vacancy in order to attract candidates to the vacancy. The vacancy title is mandatory and this is the name of the vacancy that is visible externally. 
The date that we set for the application deadline will be the last day that applications will be accepted for the position. This is a free text field and does not control the visibility of the job on channels. The expected start date can be a specific date or a term, such as ASAP. We can include the location of the position and also the appetizer text. The appetizer text is visible after the candidate clicks on the advert. It is usually longer than the one-liner and is used to give a brief overview of the position being advertised. The vacancy text contains all the information about the vacancy, as well as HTML for company logos, banners, videos, and external links. If we've selected multiple languages for the vacancy, we'll need to create the advertisement for all the languages. The Enable Share This Job using Add This is an additional feature. This allows you or your candidates to share the vacancy on various social media sites. Once we've filled in all the fields, we'll click Next. Now we need to choose which kind of application form we wish to use. If we select Complete Application Form, EasyCruit will include a complete form with all the possible questions from our EasyCruit package. Alternatively, we can select from a list of templates that have been configured by our administrator. If we select Customized Application Form and CV, EasyCruit will only include mandatory questions and allow us to select additional ones that we wish to include. To configure the application form, we need to decide which questions to include. The mark slash tick box will make the questions visible for the candidates to answer. The mandatory box will make questions mandatory for candidates to answer. When we've configured the application form, we'll click Next. To include screening questions, we'll need to click Add Question, and there's a separate tutorial to show you how this is done. Then we'll click Next. If we ticked the collaborative rating box on the first page, we'll now be shown the collaborative rating tab. On this page, we can select the users we want to send rating requests to whenever a new candidate applies to this vacancy. And we can also choose whether to include the applicant's personal details in the email. Then we'll click Next. To activate a response email, we'll click the Edit Pencil icon. The default email is displayed and this can be overridden if required, but will only apply to this vacancy. The different emails we activate will be sent at different times in response to the actions of the candidate. We can choose to send an email or no email, as well as putting a time delay or no delay. If an email has not been activated, no notification will be sent for the action. On multiple language vacancies, once a response email is activated, it is activated for all vacancy languages. A green tick is shown next to the response emails that have been activated, and a red cross is shown next to the response emails that are not activated. When we're done, we'll click Next. Now we'll choose the channels we wish to publish to, and then click Next again. Here we can set specific vacancy details for the different channels we're publishing to. And as before, the red asterisk is shown next to the mandatory field and we can select multiple options by holding down the control button. Then we'll click Next. Now it's time to click Finish and Post.